Hello everyone. Welcome to Software Testing Help. I'm Sharmila and in this session I'm here to discuss about APM. Now let us understand what an APM is and we'll also see the major features of APM. APM is basically an open source mobile automation tool. So this tool is similar to a Selenium web driver wherein Selenium web driver helps us to perform automation on various platforms on various languages and also it helps cross browser uh, testing. So these features are applicable to our APM automation tool as well. APM automation helps you to do automation on different platforms in your mobile device. So your OS can be an Android or an iOS. So all the operating systems APM supports and it also supports multiple languages, which means that you can write your you can write your automation script in any of the programming languages depending upon your convenience. And one more main feature is that APM supports automation on mobile web apps, native apps and hybrid apps. So what is mobile web apps? An application that you open on a browser. Uh, for example, uh, let's consider a blogging website like software testing dot software testing help.com. So this uh, application you can open it on a mobile web browser. So this I can call it as a mobile web app. Now I'll give examples for native and hybrid apps. Uh, so native app is something that you get from the Play Store an application that is available only in the Play Store. You have to get it installed in your mobile device and only then you can use it. Uh, this app you can't take it from the browser. So such kind of application which is available only in the Play Store. You call it as a native app for example Skype and uh, any gaming application like Angry Birds etc. And about hybrid app an application that is available in your Play Store and also it can be accessed via your mobile browser. So this kind of application you call is an hybrid app. Uh, as you can see here we, we have an example of Facebook which uh, the first slide shows you the app in the app that I got installed from Play Store in my mobile device and second is I'm trying to invoke it from the browser. OK, and apart from this APM also supports automation on inbuilt apps. So when I say inbuilt apps, these are apps already present inside the mobile device. So we are not downloading it from any app store or we're not. We are not taking it from the browser. Rather, it is already installed inside the mobile device. An example is a calculator application, a calendar application, etc. So uh, it supports all the applications on a mobile device. And having these major highlights makes APM the most widely used mobile automation tool in market. So you know that Selenium WebDriver is the most widely used mobile, uh, not mobile, but automation tool for browser testing. Similarly, APM is the most widely used automation tool for mobile testing since it supports automation on various platforms and also and it also provides automation for all the applications in your mobile device. Now let's have a look at its architecture. So APM basically follows client server architecture. So when I say client server architecture, it means that APM server uh, gets the connection from the client, accepts the connection, processes the command and executes the command on the target devices. So it can be a mobile device or an emulator. So that is what a client server architecture means. Now, now, now let's have an understanding of each of the component of, uh, displayed here. So the first component is the APM client. So this is nothing but the script that we code. So we code our automation script either in Java or PHP or Python. So I told that it supports multiple languages. So whatever automation code that we script is called as an APM client. So this code will hold the configuration details like uh, in what uh, device you are asking your automation script to run on. And it also will have the mobile version details and then it will have your main automation logic. OK, so that is what APM client will hold. The next component is your APM server. Now APM is basically an HTTP server that is written using node.js programming language. So this server helps us to process the command from the client on the emulator or on the device. And the third component is the end component, which is nothing but either an emulator or mobile device on which our automation occurs. So these are the main uh, three major components of our APM architecture. So now let's understand the flow. So your APM client sends commands to APM server in JSON format and this APM server understands the commands and triggers invocation in mobile and emulator. 
So that is how the basic flow is. APM client will have all the initial configuration details of your mobile and it will also have the main logic to run your applic application. So these configuration details also will be read along with the logic that you have coded and APM server will find the appropriate mobile device and give a trigger on the particular mobile device for your application to run on. And here you can see UI automation instrumentation and UI automator. So these are nothing but vendor provider framework that helps APM to support automation on various platforms. So now I'll just give you an idea of what a vendor provider framework is. Now we know that APM supports automation on multiple platforms. So that is achieved using a vendor provider framework. Each OS will have its specific vendor provider framework like iOS will have Apple's UI automation framework. So this framework is developed by the company Apple itself and Android 4.2 plus version will have a um, framework called UI automator and Android 2.3 plus will have a framework called instrumentation. Now using these frameworks, APM will be able to perform automation on multiple platforms. Now let's have an in detail understanding of how these frameworks work on Android and on iOS along with APM. Now this uh, shows us the architecture of APM automation on an Android device and on an iOS device. So let me explain this. Uh, your APM client, which, which holds your configuration details of mobile device, the version number and also the main logic uh, of the flow of the application will send the request or the commands to the APM server in JSON format. So the commands are converted into JSON format using some library or JAR file by the APM client. So these commands are read by the APM server, recognizes the requirements for the Android. It, it also understands the version of the Android and it invokes that particular framework. So if it is a, a 4.2 plus Android version, it goes to UI Automator framework. If it is a 2.3 plus Android version, it goes to its cell Android framework. And this framework will next send its request to the actual device, which will hold a bootstrap.jar file. And the jar file does the execution of all the commands in the mobile device. And once the execution is completed, it sends back the request to the uh, APM server, which in turn goes a long way back to the APM client. So this response is uh, given in form of HTTP. Now that's how the flow goes for an Android device. So this is similar for your iOS also. Your APM client sends the commands in JSON format to APM server. APM server understands the commands and it uh, reads the version and the requirements of your mobile device. And depending upon that, it calls that appropriate framework. So for iOS, my framework will be UI automation. And this framework looks for bootstrap.js in the simulator and performs the actions that we send from your APM client. And this in turn will send response back to my APM client via HTTP. So that's how the uh, whole or entire process of APM automation looks like. Basically, you have an APM client wherein you have the main logic, which includes all your initial configuration details of a mobile device, the version number and the application name and also the code which helps your application to run. And this APM client will send the commands in JSON format. The APM server will receive the commands and perform the automation on that particular framework, depending upon whatever mobile device you're requesting for. And once the operation is all complete, it sends back the response to the APM client in form of HTTP. Okay, so that's much about the APM. So in the next session, we'll see about the initial installation and the basic stuff of APM, how to run it on a mobile device. Thank you.